So hello and welcome to another very special live episode of the MotoGP podcast, Last on the Breaks, should get the branding right. And we are here in lovely sunny, jokes, extremely rainy Buriram on a lovely soggy Thursday. And you can see we have our guest with us today, Maverick Vinales. Thank you so much for joining us from Aprilia Racing. So I'm from Wild, this is Elliot York as always. And uh, yeah, Maverick, it's going to be a very easy first question. How are you? <laughs> I'm fantastic, honestly. I feel uh, really good. I feel uh, really realized, which is the best feeling you can mm -hmm. have in your life. So I feel You I feel seem fantastic. like, even just walking in here to do yeah. a podcast, which I'm sure is your favorite activity <laughs> of the weekend, you're like, hi. <laughs> I feel fantastic, you know, and I'm enjoying a lot every single thing of what I'm doing, and uh, I get fun. I just want to get fun, and uh, especially, you know, here in MotoGP, this is my passion. So I just get fun of everything. Before we move into the, like, the nitty gritty of the last like couple of years, obviously last weekend in Japan, how was it? We've had wet weather there. It looks like this weekend we're going to have a lot of wet weather. So how are you feeling in the wet conditions? It was a very tough uh, weekend, of course. The weather has been uh, very constant in Japan. But however, we take uh, good points, we take good, good position, good information, because at the end I ride just the Aprilia two times on wet. Mm. Japan was the third time. And we were able to make a really good qualifying. So we were really pleased about how the bike is working on wet and uh, how much strong we can, we can be on, on these conditions. Looking this weekend, <laughs> it gives us calm and gives us a lot of motivation because yeah. even if we have uh, difficult uh, conditions like wet, dry, wet, dry, we can be there. We can be fighting. It seems like in general this season now, since, I mean, Germany before you had the problem, but then from Assen onwards, you just, everything's come together so much. How does it feel now within the team? Because obviously you've arrived a little bit later to Aprilia, but they've had some real struggles and years working to this level. What's the atmosphere like now and how is it to be living this kind of incredible moment for them in the racing history of their brand? Yeah, it is an incredible moment. But the way we are working is like uh, we did nothing, you know. We have the same hungry from when we start the season, and also we are the same motivate as, as in the last races, and that's very important, you know, to keep the focus, to keep the same mentality. You're not just like, well, we've made it now, guys, so <laughs> let's have no, a few no, no, pina no. coladas. I'm <laughs> the first to don't let relax the people, you know. <laughs> I want to work because, you know, I'm putting a lot of effort on this. I'm working really hard. Honestly, day by day, not even only in MotoGP, also at home, physically, and, and all this stuff you have to do no? for, for being at the maximum on the bike. So the good point of our team is that every member give the, <laughs> give the maximum, give the best, and try to uh, add something positive, which is also very important. But uh, we are enjoying a lot. Uh, as you mentioned, after, especially the change come in um, uh, Momelo test, we test uh, different setups on the bike, which it helped us uh, a lot on braking. And after that, my results were always or podium or very close, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. to fight. And if I was not on the podium, it was because we didn't put a good weekend together. And uh, actually, I'm very pleased because from being 15, 14, struggling on a difficult time, wow, we make a big jump. We jump straight to the podium, yeah, and, uh, like in Assen <laughs> and Silverstone, fighting for the victory. Yeah. So it gives you how much we can improve during one year. And we need to keep confident, we need to keep confident on our, on our work and on our, uh, especially on our plans. And uh, doing like that, I think, of course, uh, we want the victory, we want it really bad. <laughs> But it will come. We, we are not on a rush, but it will come, I'm sure. I, feel, I still remember, I think the gap at Silverstone was 0.426. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was yeah, really, know. was really close, eh? <laughs> it, it was close, also in Assen, it was close. And in many tracks, also in Misano, at the end I, I give up a little bit because I was a little bit on the limit. Mm. But, you know, it will come. We need to work well, and uh, the day I can put it from lap one to lap, <laughs> to last lap, it will come, I'm sure. It feels like it's coming soon. Just going to hop back to sort of 2020 because I think okay. the last time you were on the podcast was when you yeah, were doing it. Yeah, it was me you... and Matt on the computers in lockdown. <laughs> you were in your office. <laughs> oh, <okay. Yeah. laughs> it's like so times. much has changed now. Okay. So much has changed, obviously, in everyone's lives, but especially yours as well. How was COVID and lockdown for you as a rider? How hard was it to sort of keep motivation? Everyday life was obviously difficult for everyone, but just speaking as a rider, that sort of four or five months of not really knowing what's going on, how difficult was that? For the, 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 the most difficult part was to don't know when, when we're gonna race. 
uh, how we're going to do it, you know, which tracks, because you cannot prepare really well. You know, it's, it's quite difficult if you just uh, prepare uh, two weeks before. You need a little yeah. bit more uh, timing to prepare. And for me, it was difficult this uncertain moment, which we don't know even if we're going to race anymore. You know, it, it was a pretty tough time. But also a time to think, a time to stay with yourself, to stay calm, a little bit more relaxed. We have a life where we rush a lot, you know? Yeah. Also, you know, travel uh, then uh, in the hotel all the time with the bags. So it's kind of a all the year flying, travel, and you don't have time to relax, stop, think. Mm. And actually for me it was, uh, I think one of benefit, of course, from the COVID was that, that I could think of myself, I could think, yeah what I want and uh, it was fantastic honestly it was fantastic because I organized my life really well <laughs> and actually now I'm taking all the profits and yeah. uh, it's, I was gonna say it's now amazing. a lot has changed for you moving yeah. to Aprilia obviously and then also your family you now have that kind of completely different to before <laughs> how much does that affect you now like you said life is pretty crazy even for us who don't have to do the very difficult bit <laughs> moving constantly packing unpacking flights etc <laughs> How much does it help you kind of feel grounded now that you've got that family, obviously your daughter and your partner? Yes, of course it gives you a lot of stability, but on the same time, uh, it's not easy to it's have... It's got a, extra mutual <laughs> <mutual honesty. laughs> It's yeah, not yeah, easy, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm lucky that my wife tried to take care of everything, and uh, it makes me, my life much more easier because, you know, as I said, I'm putting a lot of effort on that. I train a lot. Uh, I pass a lot of time with my, with my trainer, with Yves. And uh, it's, it's kind of a hard, you know, sometimes to say, okay, I want to stay with my family, I want to stay with my daughter, but on the other hand, I need to train, I need to do all the yeah. stuff. And uh, I'm putting a lot of effort every day, you know, and somehow it's uh, very nice, you know, this reward with the podium, seeing that you can win, mm -hmm. that's amazing. It's a feeling which is really good and uh, we deserve it because we are working very hard. How, how important is family life and home life and just happiness in general? Because we've seen it with Jack Miller as well. He's obviously sitting <laughs> down, getting married next week, I think, before Australia. The old cliche is like a happy rider is a fast rider, and it seems to be <laughs> your case. How good is it to have that stability, obviously, a wife and daughter's home, just to also keep you calm in maybe some stressful moments as well? I think um, when you have a kid and you have your own family, all the other things are a little bit apart. You know, yeah. uh, it's like a perspective your family, kind yeah, of your family become your first part of your life, and mm -hmm. then the other ones become the second one. But in the same hand, it gives you a lot of motivation because in, in my past, uh, MotoGP was uh, my main uh, thing on my head. You know, like I yeah. was thinking all the time, MotoGP, MotoGP, MotoGP. When I had uh, Nina, and especially when I get uh, in um, with Raquel. Of course, MotoGP is my priority, but having a kid, having a family, for me, it gives you a little bit of room, you know, mm. of room of breathe, you know, <coughs> be a little bit out of the bikes when you are at home, try yeah. to disconnect a little bit. And at the end of the day, for me, it feels much better because I feel released. I feel when I come from one race to another race, I feel with the energy mm. is uh, really high. You know, I get a refresh and uh, for me, uh, it, of course, the result, it cares a lot. But when you arrive home and you see your daughter, you see <laughs> your wife, it's different, you know? Yeah. It's just different. So you apart a little bit the feelings you have on the track, and it gives you, for me, for my understanding and for who I am, it gives you a lot of refresh and a new energy. And yeah. that's something great, you know? Even in Japan, of course, I wanted to be on the podium, and I wanted to be fighting the race. Yeah. And of course, I was upset, no? And this is normal. You, you want to win, mm. you, you are upset. But as soon as I finish, I call my wife, I talk with Nina, blah, 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 okay, I get mm -hmm. a little bit more calm. Yeah. And then I say, okay, now it's time to work for Thailand. And it's something I, I use, I use a lot. I use a lot to refresh and to keep this motivation, you know, going on circle, mm. track to another track, and it's paying really well. Well, it does seem to be. <laughs> and also, like Aprilia, you seem, it seems to be a really good mix now. Because obviously, I think everyone forgets because obviously the headlines with Yamaha changing factory to Aprilia. Okay. But you also won with Suzuki. You're also yeah. a really important part of that project. Then you moved to Yamaha, won a lot with them as well. 
but now how is it now because you've grown with them as well like you said I think maybe before we started recording when you're like 15th 16th <laughs> fighting to get the points yeah, of course. and maybe a lot of noise I think from the paddock of like oh because of all the drama and you change factory oh he's 16th <laughs> but then you just focused and now you have the rewards does it feel like a different atmosphere in Aprilia now and something that you need and that keeps you motivated as well since day one I felt a really good atmosphere in Aprilia that's something I really like from this factory and it's one of the qualities I feel uh, uh, a good background and also a good group that's that's very important because of course I was struggling I was thinking I'm gonna make it I'm not gonna make it sometimes it was difficult you know uh, I have a really good confidence on myself, but I think, okay, I need to adapt a completely new bike. Also, and completely new, eh? From yeah. the inline four of and course, now completely very new. new. And then I arrived to one track, and the lines were completely different. <laughs> so I was like, say, I, I feel really like a rookie. I feel really like a rookie. So what am I going to do to be in the front <laughs> and to do the results that uh, the people, and especially Aprilia, expect from me? So I just start to try to don't think too much. So actually, one of the things I did is try to don't think too much, ride, <laughs> enjoy, and uh, enjoy the moment, and push the bike a lot, and this is what I did, you know? Of course, I needed to change a little bit the riding style, I needed to see a lot of data, but at the end of the day, what I'm doing is that I'm enjoying, you know? And uh, for me, it was kind of a good reward when I see myself on wet in the front. Like before in qualifying, I never did. I always was 12, 13. <laughs> I could not never been fast on wet, but now I feel I can be fast even on wet. So <laughs> I'm really happy on this. These I'm are really good happy. and big words before this weekend, yeah. maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, we can't explain to everyone who doesn't know how wet it has been yeah. mm. since we arrived in Buriram. <laughs> like my feet never are wet stop. right now. Literally. Never stop raining. Not stop for even a second. Wednesday so, yeah. morning through to even now. It's yep. just Still been going. constant rain. <laughs> how much have you had to change, Maverick? In your riding style and how much has the bike changed adapted towards you how how different was the aprilia when you first got on it and even now to the yamaha that you were used to <laughs> so ride you're in. grinning again just thinking about the bike you're like, yeah. <laughs> because i like this kind of of riding style but at the end i think was not changing my riding style it's coming to my natural riding style okay and of course it's hard because i've been a long time without doing my natural riding style right and uh, now I'm getting again in my natural riding style, and uh, that's something beautiful because I have no, I don't need to think on the bike, you know. Yeah. I just need to ride, feel the limits. So the, the whole tires. time on the inline four, you feel like you're kind of fighting in, in, your natural. In Suzuki, no, I did it yeah, very okay. natural, but in Yamaha, I needed to change a lot my riding style, a lot, and uh, somehow, you know, I lose my quality. You know, I was braking very late, really deep, really hard, so I was good breaker. Uh, great on overtaking always and in the past years I was losing all, all that that at the end is my quality as a rider and uh, with Aprilia I'm recovering of course still it's not at the maximum of my potential but it's coming and that's great it's great I mean uh, now I can break very late and that's something I really love I really love to feel the tires I really love to push the bike very aggressive yeah because like you weren't in Moto 2 Moto 3 you weren't that kind of smooth i don't know lorenzo ish is always the example because of all the success he had <laughs> yeah. on the yamaha you weren't that rider ever no. so do you feel like that's just yeah, feel more I, like I yourself just come from a right different now. era for example in moto 3 at the end was four stroke so it changed from the two, two stroke you needed to be very smooth otherwise you always make high sight or flying <laughs> so you have to be very smooth keep a lot of corner speed but in Moto2 was totally the opposite. We were sideways on braking, stopping the bike, <laughs> using the engine. So it was totally different riding style. And um, as I mentioned, with Aprilia, I feel more natural, you know? Of course, there is still things that I don't feel natural because the bike is made for a very different riding style. But we are working very hard with Aprilia to, to all these now details I don't feel natural to make him feeling natural. And then, of course, I will increase also my potential. When this year did you know, or did you and the team know, that you could start winning races, challenging for winning races, and getting on the podium? When was it like the little sort of click? I was like, okay, the we're here now. The confidence has been here always. Because yeah. I've seen, for example, uh, Argentina. In the, mm -hmm. For me, Argentina came too early. Yeah. If it came uh, now, it, it's <laughs> going to be different. Of <laughs> I would be much more uh, competitive, and yeah. especially, I think, fighting with Alex for the victory. Mm. But uh, I felt Argentina was good, Indonesia was very good. 
Austin was very good. Just I, I didn't qualify in front. Yeah. But I remember in Austin I had second fast lap of the race mm -hmm. and a good, really good rhythm because I recovered from 18 to P10 yeah. or P9. So actually it was a, a lot of problems that we had wasn't qualifying. And uh, now we solve because we have a lot of speed. So actually it makes the weekend more easy. <laughs> yeah. Much more easy. Like, the start seemed to be a bit better now as well. Yeah, Do you think course. you're better with this bike at getting off the line? We, we have a list. We have a list. <laughs> like uh, how much you gain in the start, how much you gain in the first corner, and how, you, how much you win in the, in the first lap. So yeah. last year I was la not last, but nearly last. And uh, this year I'm fifth, sixth. <laughs> So Just I make a big jump. Yeah. I remember in, in Assen, I made like six places yeah. in the first lap, yeah. also in Saxon Ring. So yeah, I'm becoming strong on the points. Usually I was strong, usually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So very good, I'm happy. As it feels, it feels a relief, say. you know? Yeah. It feels a relief. Assen was obviously a very big and important round because yeah. we know how well you go there. So everyone sort of, especially after Germany when you should have really been on the podium and for the, for the mechanical issue. How did you feel heading to Aston and obviously getting on the podium, recovering from uh, where you qualified to get onto the podium as well? It was such a fantastic race. It, it was fantastic Aston, but for me, since we found a better basic setup from Momelo Test, mm -hmm. we could be on the podium all the races. Yeah. Just because we didn't touch the correct things during the weekend, but it can be podium every race. And that's great because it's what we are looking for. And especially to build up this confidence, to build up the, the way of winning, you have, must be fighting in the podium. And sometimes, of course, I want to pass from six to first, mm -hmm. but sometimes it's not like that. You need to build it up, yeah. and that's the way. And I'm pretty happy, honestly, because since we changed that, our potential increased a lot, and still we can improve it much more because we can see details on the bike which can improve. Mm -hmm. and uh, it will, I will make a big step because I will feel more comfortable. I feel like you're more the maverick from Moto2, Moto3 again. <laughs> I, like there. Like I remember, was it in Moto2, you won your second race, right? Yes. And I remember you picking up the thing and sharing that you, the winner's name in the middle of the press conference. <laughs> and you're like, I think Mark Marquez did it in three. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. I feel like you got the yeah, little bit yeah. of back. I mean, no? uh, I, I'm, I'm always a really, uh, really funny guy and explosive guy. And uh, I think that's something you have. You, you never have to lose these things because it's how you are, you know, it's your yeah. personality. And uh, yeah, of course, having a difficult time sometimes makes you feel more um, like off, you know? Yeah. And uh, I don't know, just the first day I was in Aprilia, I said, okay, let everything go, mm -hmm. enjoy yourself. And Reset. I'm enjoying a lot every single day. Even the pre-events, the events, I enjoy. <laughs> it do, it Even the pre-events? You know, sometimes, <laughs> yeah, some, sometimes, you know, you are tired or whoever. Yeah. But I'm very enthusiastic. Everyone, I want to be there, you know, yeah, I want to enjoy. Yeah, yeah. Even here, like every, you just like, yes, that's yes, fine. Because <laughs> we obviously, we know we're annoying sometimes, well, the journalists are annoying sometimes, but it's Not nice. annoying, but sometimes, for example, you know, I wake up this morning, I went training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm a bit tired. You no, know? sometimes you want to relax and you have to do other stuff. Yeah. Also, a part of the meetings and all the stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And sometimes you feel a little bit tired. But you know, for me now, the mood I have, I don't care if I'm tired. <laughs> I keep the motivation high and <laughs> I feel fantastic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, okay, so we should end on quick fire questions because I think we need to let you go in a okay. second. So, fairly quick and easy. Okay. What's the best advice you've ever received? Oh, the best advice I received this year, and I think it's one of the best advice of my life. Let's say the word is a little bit. I don't know if we can say it. We're on live, so now I'm worried. <laughs> but uh, not all the people will understand, so it's in, okay. uh, in my language, it's, it's in Catalan. It's uh, ser marrano. Marrano, it means like uh, you have to be a mad dog, you know? Okay, cool. Okay, yeah. we'll, so see, we'll see. That's my best advice I get this year because <laughs> I need to be a mad dog riding the Aprilia. <laughs> I need to be. I like the translation as well, mad dog. <laughs> <laughs> I need to be wild, you know? Yep. Actually, I grow up a lot of muscles since I'm in Aprilia. Really? You just... <laughs> and when I finish the race, I'm just pump up. It's like when yeah. I go to the gym one time, I, I realize super I have tired. muscles I never knew were there. I, I always, uh, you know, when I finish the, the race, I just go and uh, feel super shy, and you're like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> really. 
Am I so going to the next one? I, was, okay. I thought you were going to go. Okay, we'll take it in turns. Yeah, that makes sense. So what would you have told yourself at 16 years old with the knowledge that you have now? Okay. There's an interesting one with you mm. with your Meta 3 uh, adventures as well. <laughs> no rush. No rush. No yeah. rush. No rush. That's good. Uh, do all the... Like, uh, let the time, you know, uh, do the things. Accomplish Moto3, accomplish Moto2, and then go to MotoGP, you know. Yeah. And try to don't <clears throat> rush too much. And uh, at the end, we start like we are a kid. And uh, very mature, you know. In, in that moment, you feel mature, but it's yeah, not true. Yeah. Yeah. When you grow up, you... <laughs> Ten years <laughs> later, it's like, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. I think when you arrive to MotoGP, you have to be more mature. Yeah. And uh, at the end, it's a really serious job. You know, you are playing with factories, you are getting paid mm -hmm. for many things, so you have to be very professional. Yeah. You don't have to be just a kid, so you have I to be very Augusto professional. I think Augusto said, be patient as well when he asked him. Yeah, so of course. I think that's a, a thing you all say. So, right, we're nearly ready to wrap up. Okay. Final one, favorite food and favorite track. <laughs> You can answer favorite track, I think. I think it's Aston, no? Well, or one of the Philip Island. Island. Okay, I was like, it's one think, or the other. I think, um, of course, uh, all my success is in Aston because I win in, uh, in nearly all the categories. In Moto2, I, I did second. But Philip Island, it's amazing. Does yeah. Philip Island feel like the one you have a special circle around this year? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 but I don't know, I have on a different bike. But however, you know, I feel, I, ca I have the kind of a feeling that I'm ready for every weekend. Yeah. And uh, the bike feels very constant in all the tracks, so, you know, I have the mentality very open to be putting that circle in, in every weekend. We love the confidence. Yeah, and also right. the food, I don't know, I like, I, I like <laughs> pasta I like because it's one of the things that on the diet they cut the most. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> if they think you like when you get it, you're like, oh. <laughs> yeah, of course. I have one more important okay. one. Who's better at changing nappies or diapers, you or Raquel? Mm. <laughs> Final question. Well, in, uh, when Nina was uh, really a, a baby, like from zero to six months, I was the specialist. <laughs> Not faster, you were the specialist. specialist. So yeah. I was the one in charge. The yeah, high yeah. quality. Yeah, yeah. the Not, one in charge. Not going for the lap record. <laughs> the, one, the, race pace. <laughs> the one in charge. Oh, come on, he's amazing. <laughs> I hope you are not uh, yeah. fancy, but, yeah, yeah. because it's crazy, man. It's crazy. <laughs> okay, well, perfect note to end on. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Thank Patrick. You. Best Thank of luck you. this weekend and the rest of the, okay. of the year. And hopefully, we will see you on the top step again yeah, soon. It's been I a while. Wish, and I wish. It's something I'm really looking forward. I work very hard. I put a lot of effort, of course, and uh, I try to give the maximum every single day. And uh, I want Aprilia to make them uh, very proud of me. And especially, I want to become champion with them, so I'm, I'm yeah. pushing very much every day. What a sign-off statement. Hear. It's like, yes. yes. <laughs> All right, that. well, <laughs> thank thanks so thank much, you, and thank yeah, you. best of luck. Thank you. And thanks, everyone, for joining us. See you again soon.